Hey guys, this is Alex Pierce from LightsailVR.com. In this video, I'm going to show you the basics of chroma keying and assimilate live effects. Whether you need to key out a green screen, replace a blue sky, or simply isolate a specific color, Live Effects has a powerful set of tools to help you out. Make sure to subscribe to get more videos like this. Okay, let's jump in. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a new live setup. And we're going to do, we'll do green screen with background. I'm going to have my black magic card coming in. My format, this all comes in correct. For the background, let me just choose something I have on here. I'm gonna choose my camera profile, which is my sensor size. And if you have trackers, you can enable that as well. I'll go ahead and press create. And I'm going to turn off the background for now. We're just gonna focus on the key. I'm also going to turn off our tracking for a minute because I don't want that to affect anything either. So this template that we've chosen has gone ahead and added a chroma keyer for us, but the default for this value is none. So we'll just start from none. To see the keying tools, go to the qualifier, and right now we are on the keyer layer, which is the capture layer, that's the video card coming in. If I click on this qualifier, you have different options. You have none, you have RGB, which selects colors one way. You have HSV, which is hue, saturation, and value. This is my favorite one. You have luminance keyer, which is really helpful when you have really bright spots or really dark spots that you want to, to select. You have chroma key, which is the default, and it can work okay. And then you have vector key, which for s very specific reasons, sometimes this works best, and then source alpha. So nine times out of 10, I'm going to select the HSV keyer. I find it's more intuitive to work with and it's just easier to do. So you can choose to pick a color in the viewport by choosing, making sure this pick is enabled. And now if I click once and let go, it's going to sample the color value in the viewport at that place. You can also hold down control and drag and it'll sample that area. And if you look down here, um, especially in the, the saturation or the values area, if I click around these different areas, you can see how they're different. So if I grab the control key, I can grab a lot more of it. And you can see even just by doing this, we've got a much better key, just right out of the gate. Also, instead of show matte, you can also do matte this way. You can also choose a different color if you wanna see it a different way. But usually I stick to matte, uh, matte is usually pretty good. So another thing I do is I go into options over here, and I usually use this expand by about one. And we'll come and look at this here in a minute. So let's go ahead and enable our background so we get a pretty good sense of this. And then we can turn off show matte. And this subject may not be the best one, but if you go back to the options tab and expand, and let's put in one, so you can see how it just sort of clips just that outer part, which is really good, back at zero. And then if I hold down shift, I can go in small increments. So you can see two is probably too much. Obviously, if you go too far, it's gonna to be too much. But if I go to one, it's, one always seems to work for me. Um, so we can come back out. So again, even if this doesn't get you the perfect key, let's go ahead and actually, I'm gonna deliberately make this key worse. So let's say this is your key, and no matter what you select, you can't seem to get a better uh, key. The thing you can do is you can mess with all these sliders down here, and it's, it's pretty simple once you just take a look at it. So typically, you're, you're basically, these are the main areas you're, you're, you're keying out right now. So maybe you want more green and maybe you want more yellow, kind of depends on your, your subject here. Um, and for this, I'm gonna go ahead and do matte, turn matte back on. So now I can, this is saturation, so less saturation, that's better. And then this is value, so this is darker, this is brighter. So you can see just by, Sliding a few sliders, we've already gotten a much better key. And if we just keep expanding this, there we go, we can get a better result. Sometimes it's easier to just click on the, the numbers over here and drag them, and then this is sort of the, the fall off of that. So now we're back to here, it's not still not perfect. It's also good to look to see what value is not keyed properly. So if I show matte, I can hover over this and wherever my mouse is, even though this is in the matte view, it's showing this color underneath it. So you can see that's a nice green. You can see this is sort of a, 
a very desaturated green. So it might be that we need to get, take, get rid of, yeah, so that was the problem. So you see how the saturation, this desaturated green, that desaturated green doesn't exist in the background if we go to the source. This is all very saturated green. This green that's here is very desaturated. So let me go back to that. So now you can see we have a pretty good key here. So the other thing you probably noticed right away is that we have some pretty gr bad green spill on our subject here, and it's not uh, recommended to use uh, reflective <laughs> Uh, stand-ins, but it's actually this actually will work really well for to show you how to despill. So there are despill options. Um, I actually don't use them. I always just go to the curves, and if I bring up the side menu over here, you can make sure you're on the keyer. Uh, so curves, and then hue saturation, and then you can just take the greens down. So if I if I zoom in here, uh, let me reset that. I can just bring down the green so you can see that's much better. And then if I bring down sort of the yellow, some more of the, this side as well, that'll work. The other thing you can do is you can pick. So you can hover over this color and drag it down. And then if you move right or left, it moves that uh, in, in that direction. If you just bring that straight down, it'll bring that for you. And you can come in here, do it again to find exactly where that, that green is. So now you can see we have very little green. If I bypass this, you'll see what that despill does. And it looks really good. I'm going to go stand in just so you can see what it looks like on a human. So now the other thing we can do is we can get rid of the studio here. So how do you do that? If you go to the canvas menu, now you can see if I hover over any one of these lines, I can actually pull in this side here, and I can pull down the top, and I can pull down the left. So you can see now, you don't see the studio, all you see is our lovely subject here, and this wonderful background plate that we have. Let's do something a little bit more interesting with the background. So in addition to this rectangle mask, you can also do a custom mask. So if I go to Freeform, I can actually draw a mask. And you can invert that mask as well. So if you want to see the, the invert of that, you can do that. Um, and you can then click on these if you want to edit these individual spots more specifically. You can add if you want to add a, a another spot. So if you want to add more points, you just use the add button. If we go back to edit, and you can also delete points by clicking on this delete, and it will delete those points as needed. And here is a bonus tip. If I click on this background, and I go to fill matte, and I zoom out here, you can see this is a super fisheye lens, and if I want to unwrap this, all I have to do is go to plugins, effects, lens and distort, I can apply on layer, and then I can just take the K1 value and go, I'm just holding down shift and going backwards, and now I can straighten this up. So I'm looking at some of these lines over here, they should be straight more or less. And then I can go back to fill mat and scale it up, and now we have a more or less straight background. And with tracking applied, I can actually use this super wide view and zoom in, zoom out, and do a lot of really interesting things here. Okay, that wraps up this video. Make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.